Hi, gang. Since last week I covered how to do zipper pulls, it seemed like buttons would be a really good idea to follow up. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, I figured I'd cover three different styles of buttons. We're going to do a small button for a shirt, a larger leather covered button for a jacket, and a shank button for a pair of jeans. So let's get going. We'll start with the smallest button, which is going to be for the shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom into an area because we'll be working small. I can tell you from experience that a good size for this button is going to be five points. So I'm going to go to my ellipse tool, click once on the page, let's bring this into frame, and type five points by five points. Click OK. And now I've got a tiny little circle. Now I know that the one point stroke on that is going to be much too thick. So let's go over to the stroke panel and change it to 0.5. And now I'm just going to zoom in. Whoops, let's do this so we can see what we're doing here. All right, we need the holes for the button. And that means going back to the ellipse tool and making some really tiny holes. So I'm going to attempt to make a hole that is one point by one point and see what happens. And the inside of this hole is OK, but the outside is really too big. So what if we swap the stroke and fill color so that we have uh, a filled shape and no stroke? We're going to get rid of the stroke. And that still looks a little bit big to me. Still kind of big for the proportion of this button. So let's do one more time. This time we'll try 0.5. So I'll click on the page with the ellipse tool, type in 0.5, tab 0.5 and click OK. And I think that's going to be a much better size. So we've got a little circle here with a black fill and no stroke. Now to go ahead and make the four holes I'm going to need for this button, I have a couple of options. I can hold the Alt key and then just drag this over, also holding the Shift key so they stay in line. And then I can select the two of them and do the same thing. Start dragging down and then hold my Alt and Shift key to keep them in line. And there's my four little buttonholes. Another way I can do this, or not buttonholes, but holes in my button, right? Another way is to copy, control C, paste in front, control or command F, and then use the arrow key to nudge it over one click. Select both of them and do the same thing. Control or command C, control or command F for face, control or command F for paste in front, and then nudge it down one click with my arrow key. So those are two different ways of doing it. For this button, I think I like the spacing on top. So I'm going to delete the bottom one, group the top ones together, because if I don't, I can't do the align process. And now let's align these. I'll select the button and the little holes that go inside. I'm going to go up here and align center, and then center in this direction. And there's my button. So I'm going to take it. I'll go ahead and group it together. And whenever I make a button, I always turn it into a symbol. So I'm going to open up my symbols and just drag that button right in. And it's going to ask me for a name and we'll call it shirt button. And there's my first button. If you want to make a slightly fancier version of this, it's very, very simple. Uh, in order to work with this, though, I first need to break the link to the symbol since I made it a symbol. So the way I'm going to do that is right click, break link to symbol. And now it's just some shapes I can work with. We'll go ahead and ungroup it. What if I take this outer circle here? Well, it's just a circle. It's going to be the outer circle in a minute. We're going to double click on the scale tool. And I'm going to type in 80 degrees under uniform and we're going to copy it. So we now have a second line inside the circle that's 80 degrees. It's kind of fat, so we'll go to our strokes and change the stroke weight on that to maybe 0.5, nope, much too big, 0.25. And there we've got a fancier looking button. So I can select that. We'll go again to the symbols and we're just gonna drag that right in and we'll call this one shirt button. Um, fancy, maybe. I mean, it's not super fancy, but I think we get the idea. So there's our first basic button. And as you can see, that's going to fit really nicely on the shirt and to slightly different proportion than the one that I made, but that's fine, right? 
you can make all kinds of buttons. And since it is a symbol, it's really easy to scale as well if you need it to be bigger or smaller for different shirts. All right, let's do the next button, which is this leather button that we would use for a coat. This button works best at an ellipse that is 10 points by 10 points. So with the ellipse tool, I click on the page and I'm going to type in 10, tab, 10, click OK, and there's my circle. I'll hit D for default so that it uh, has a white fill and a black stroke. And I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit more. All right, for this button, it's got kind of woven leather straps on it. So I'm going to grab the pen tool, I'm going to start right in the center, and I'm going to draw a straight line. So just click, click with the pen tool. And this looks a little thick, so let's go to our strokes, and I'm going to make this 0.25. All right, now that I've got my single uh, stroke here, I'm going to make sure that it has no fill. I'm going to grab the anchor point tool. So up here with the pen tool is the anchor point tool. The shortcut key for this is Shift C, and I prefer to use the shortcut. I'm going to, now that I have the tool, just take this and drag this end out a little bit so it gives the appearance that this is sort of wrapping around the button. All right, so that's the first piece. Now we're going to take this and we're going to rotate it. So we're going to hit R on our keyboard for rotate, and then hold your Alt or Option key down and click on the center anchor point and that brings up the rotate menu. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees and we're going to make a rotated copy. So instead of OK, I'll be clicking copy and there's my second piece. I need two more and instead of going through that process again, I can just duplicate it. The shortcut key is Control or Command D for duplicate and it repeats the last thing you did. So Control D once and then again it rotates that the rest of the way around. Now there's one more little piece that we need, so again I'm going to grab my pen tool, and there's kind of a piece that goes over here, which is sort of the other side of this piece, if you can follow my pen tool. So I'm just going to click here, and click there, maybe curve it a tiny bit, and that's the other piece I need. So with my black arrow, I'm going to select that piece, again I'm going to click R to reflect, I'm going to Alt or Option click right in the center, 90 degrees again, and copy. And then we can duplicate again, Control or Command D, Control or Command D. And now we've got our button, we just need to clean it up a little bit. Let's take this outer stroke and make it a little thinner because it looks heavy to me. One point's kind of big. What's .75 look like? I think that's going to work nicely. All right, so now we're going to clean up all these little pieces that are sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. And we're going to go over here and use this tool, which is called the Shape Builder. And it's definitely a favorite of mine. If I were to hover over pieces, it changes color. And if I were to click, it would actually divide those pieces. But I don't need to divide this all up for this particular process. All I want to do is remove the pieces on the edge. And if you hold down your Alt or Option key, and then click, it will remove a piece. Now, I don't have to be careful to like click carefully on each piece. I can hold my Alt key down and just sort of drag across them, like so, and it will delete the pieces that are sticking out. And that's it for this button. I'll group it together, and as always, I'm going to go to my symbols and drag it in, and this is my leather button. That one's all done. All right, last but not least, let's do the shank button for the jeans. Now, because there's type going around it, we need to make this button a little bit bigger, and then we can reduce it when we're done. Otherwise, the type gets a little bit wonky. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an ellipse that is 35 points by 35 points. And we'll hit D for default so that we've got a white fill and a black stroke. I'm going to go to my scale tool, double click on it. I'm going to scale or at least make another circle that is 50% of this one. So with 50% typed in, we don't need preview on, we're going to click copy, and now we have a second circle on the inside. With the black arrow, I'm going to go back and select the outside circle again, we're going to go to the scale tool again, and this one is going to be 70%, and again copied. 
this 70% line is where the type is going to go. So to add type to something, we switch to the type tool. And the one we want is called type on a path. So just click and hold on the type tool and select type on a path. We're going to click on the path we set for our type and it gives us greeking. So now I can go ahead and type in what I want it to say, which in this case is obvious. Adobe for fashion. What else would I choose? And I'm going to space and do it again. Whoops. Adobe for fashion space Adobe for fashion. All right. And that's how you get type on a path. But the spacing is off on this, right? So let's make a few changes. I can select this and I can change the font. So back to character over here on the side, let's move the properties in a little bit. Uh, I can go back and change my font. Maybe instead of Arial, I want to use my Adobe for fashion uh, font that I use most of the time, uh, which is, where did it go? Right there. And now you can see the letters are very close together. So let's spread them out a little bit. I can do that with this down here. This adjusts the tracking. And the tracking is the space between the letters. So if I just go ahead and kind of press the arrow key here, you can see it's adding more space between my letters and making them easier to read. I can also adjust my point size. I can make it a point bigger. And I can also edit. If you'll notice, there's a lot more space here, but less space where our fashion ends and Adobe starts here. I can click right there and just add some more space using the space bar on my keyboard. So that's the nice thing about type on a path is it's totally editable. All right, so now the trick. Before I go ahead and turn this into a symbol, it's going to reduce much better if I go up to type and select create outlines which it's not letting me do right now. And the reason it's not letting me do it is because I'm still in the type tool. In order to activate this, I have to switch to the black arrow. And now if I go whoops, up to type, it will give me the option to create outlines. So what just happened was it turned my um, type into just shapes. So they'll reduce much better. So now we can go ahead and reduce it. We're going to select the whole thing and go back into the properties and we want the transform window. In here we see W for width and H for height. We want both of them to be changed to seven points. And because this was locked, I didn't have to type in seven for both of them. And now I have my button that's the correct size with the type. We can zoom in and take a closer look at that. And that is how you do type on a path to create a shank button. We can even make this a little fancier by selecting this inner circle. And since we're grouped, let's double click to go into isolation mode in order to get that symbol. Go to scale. Let's do 50% again and click copy. And now we just have one more circle in there. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we're going to save as a symbol. We'll call it shank. and click Save or click OK, and we're done. So now you know how to make three different types of buttons for your work. We've got our basic button, our leather covered button, and our shank button. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.